why are there so many meetings in cybersecurity roles? This is another video topic that I got from my comment section, which was specifically from one of my previous work vlogs. And one of you guys commented that 80% of your day is also in meetings. So basically I wanted to make a video addressing this. Why there are so many meetings in cybersecurity? Are these meetings actually important or relevant to your job? Do they help you in your career? Meeting fatigue, as well as how to manage your meetings better and have less of them. And of course, this doesn't have to be just for cybersecurity, but I think cybersecurity is definitely one of those fields with a lot of meetings. And there's not usually a project manager to help back you up and remove those pesky meetings from your calendar that you don't have to be on. First things first, let's go over the different types of meetings that you'll see as a cybersecurity professional. The first one is probably going to be, you know, your typical team meetings, whether they be weekly or every other day or even daily if you are following like a daily stand up model. My team currently is more asynchronous, so we don't have daily meetings, but we do have team meetings every other day as well as other meetings on top of that. So the recurring checkpoint meetings, those are just depending on your team and and they're probably not going to be removable, especially because, you know, your team still has to meet up and connect with each other. You're also going to have meetings on emergencies and fire drills or incident response specifically. When something goes wrong, you maybe pull into a meeting. These are typically the ones not scheduled on your calendar and they can also make your day feel like you have been sitting in meetings all day, which you likely could have been. Next could be one-on-ones with your manager or teammates or other people that you connect with on a regular basis. These are usually for connecting and networking or mentorship things. So I definitely think that is a good thing. You should definitely keep those on your calendar. And then there are those recurring meetings or like kind of like status check-ins that are there temporarily, but no one knows when they will end. So maybe it's like a weekly or bi-weekly thing where you check in with another team or another person and you just see progress on XYZ project or XYZ incident or XYZ remediation or something. So I do feel like a lot of those meetings can become asynchronous by just having like a group chat or something and having everyone that needs to be there be there. And if people can give their updates directly through that chat or an email thread even without needing to meet up at the same time on a Zoom call for something that you need to discuss, which usually isn't always a discussion. It just ends up being someone says some information or, oh, we're still waiting on XYZ for follow-up, blah, 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 etc. And And the meeting usually isn't very productive since you aren't helping them um, block oftentimes. I do think that those meetings could definitely be asynchronous compared to like an actual Zoom call or a bridge line. And then you may have company-wide or HR meetings talking about performance and things like that, as well as new happenings in your company. I think those are always interesting to attend. Typically not required, but I do think it's nice to kind of know where your company is going. And then maybe those ad hoc meetings that for projects that you're working on that maybe you need to connect with just one off and those end up being scheduled on your calendar. So these are like the typical types of meetings that you'll see working in cybersecurity or, you know, other fields in tech. For the most part, I feel like about half of them are probably going to be valid reasons to meet up. Um, and then the other ones could definitely be whittled down a little bit to asynchronous communication, which I think is going to be a big part of, I don't know, the future of working remotely, working from home. And I've been seeing a lot of articles about companies who want to keep their employees in meetings or there's such a heavy meeting culture because of the fact that companies are allowing people to work hybrid or work remotely. So they want to just make sure that they're engaged and, and at their desk, I guess. I don't know how effective that is at having someone actually complete their work in a timely manner, especially when it feels like you're in meetings so much, especially in my previous company, one of my rotations, I was, I honestly had meetings about six hours a day, five to six hours a day. If you remove one hour for lunch, that's only like two or so hours to actually do my own work every day. And it honestly gets a little bit crazy, um, especially considering that I was a very junior person on my team. I was the most junior person on my team, actually. And there was really no need for me to sit in on a few of these meetings that, that really didn't pertain to what I was working on. Granted, they did give me some insight into other projects, um, but at the end of the day, they never really helped me with my career goals or my performance for that matter. So unless I was being brought onto that project, I feel like it's more helpful to have a teammate work on it and then maybe have some kind of show and tell at the end of the month just to explain their progress. But I don't think that I needed to sit in on all those meetings as they happen on a weekly basis, um, just talking about the same things over and over again and just progress updates about that project that I was not involved in. So there's definitely a lot of meetings like that that could definitely be kind of whittled down on your calendar. Of course, this 
is a conversation to have with your manager with your team on the meeting culture of your team and what that could potentially look like to be more positive for everyone and of course more productive for everyone which i think is the most important thing i think cyber security in general just has a lot of recurring meetings because of the fact that when you're dealing with incidents and remediations it ends up being that you have to check in and check up on people because this isn't their full-time job this is your full-time job um they have you know they have their own plate of things that they are working on so when you ask them for a favor or when you ask them to remediate something whether it's vulnerability related or app security related they have to go and do those things on top of their extra work so it may not be their number one priority especially if there isn't you know like an executive breathing down their neck asking them to fix this thing by tomorrow so for the most part it may be pushed back a little bit because they may have other pressing things on their plates which it's completely understandable you always want to make sure that you're not stepping on people's toes and making sure that you know that hey this is an extra ask on top of these things granted i'm sure there are places to you know make things more streamlined and easier for everyone but but in the meantime between then you still want to be as human as possible and know that the other person is likely going to be very busy as well so i always keep that in mind when i have asked for people which is why i feel like adding another meeting to that calendar to have someone do something can oftentimes feel a little bit counterproductive because they're already busy enough as it is they don't need a 30 minute calendar invite on their calendar every single week for you to ask them if they've done the thing that you wanted them to do you know like everyone's an adult prioritization is definitely something you want to discuss beforehand so that everyone knows what to expect but i really don't think that adding another meeting is going to solve any of those issues or problems at hand unless you're planning on having them sit during that meeting share their screen and do the thing that you want them to do within those 30 minutes but but oftentimes it's not as simple as that otherwise they would have already done it um they may have their own blockers and of course it's just a little bit weird to um schedule something on a calendar for them to do that thing and show you that they've done it anyways that is a huge tangent you can tell i'm very very passionate about this specific topic there's also something called meeting fatigue which is when there's just so many meetings that it ends up becoming counterproductive to the work that you're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis whether it's disengagement from having too many meetings or just lack of productivity from the team in general so i feel like a few ways to avoid this are maybe to set no meeting days maybe it could be once a week maybe it could be fridays or mondays i feel like those are the good days to have because when someone comes back from a weekend a monday is usually the time that you spend to catch up on work catch up on emails catch up on random things over the weekend that have happened and that is a really nice day when i don't have meetings on mondays it feels really nice because i can just catch up on all those things and then on fridays of course you can wind down maybe you can have like no meeting half days where friday afternoons there may be no meetings but obviously it depends on where your team's located and if your team is international then it'll be a lot harder to do those half day type no meeting days but i still think all meetings regardless that your team have that are going to be core to your productivity and like moving forward they probably can all fit into tuesday wednesday thursday if anything but of course that is just my opinion you can still have meetings on mondays and fridays this is just something that i think would be you know a potential good way to structure things but every team is going to look different and another thing is just to combine meetings for example status update meetings that your team might already have that are on the calendar and they're not going to be deleted maybe if you have another meeting that's like an hour or two after you can combine those two so that it becomes like a mixed meeting so you don't have to get ready and prep for two different meetings separately you can just do it all at once which i personally enjoy i don't like having time in between my meetings because then it ends up being me going to a meeting and then 30 minutes later i have another meeting and then when i leave i have a 30 minute interval before my next meeting and it just ends up me being like oh well it's only 30 minutes so i don't have enough time to start this big thing that i want to do but i know that it takes away from bigger chunks of time that i would prefer to have if i was able to do all the meetings together in one combined meeting and then just have that bigger time to do my important tasks and projects that usually i cannot finish in just half an hour yeah that is something another thing would just be to meet up with your team on like a quarterly basis or so and check to see what meetings have spawned on the calendar sometimes you know people tend to add meetings and and we always tend to add when we think we want to be productive but we don't always remember to subtract and there's actually a book called subtract that i've been meaning to read but i actually really would love to implement this in my personal life but basically it's about the fact that for the things that you add to your plate you also have to delete or 
delete or subtract from your plate as well so that you're able to be as productive as possible on the things that you do decide to work on that are important to you and productive so whenever you decide to add something always look back and make sure to check to see if there's something that you could also subtract and that typically ends up being a stray recurring meeting that may have been added to people's calendars that maybe not a lot of people are attending anyway that maybe could be combined with the bigger team meeting that you already have on the calendar i'm telling you meeting hygiene makes such a big difference on your work environment on the work on your team culture and just on how you feel during work um when i sit in on meetings for four hours a day i do not feel like i am engaged and you know so warped into my company or so in tune with my team i feel like we're all just i feel like all of us are just like uh i need a coffee break before the next meeting and everyone else is like yeah me too <laughs> you know it's kind of like no one actually wants to sit and stare at each other for four hours a day and honestly i'm really glad that my current company is a lot better with meeting flexibility and meeting culture in general compared to my previous roles where i have had experiences where i've sat in on many many meetings a day that did not really pertain to what i was working on and did not help me in my career or even with my understanding with a lot of things because a lot of them end up just being those status update meetings that don't end up providing any value at the end of the day so it, it really depends on the company though i i definitely think it's not something that just can just change overnight because because some teams just if something goes wrong then bam meeting invite to everyone um no chance of asynchronous communication it's all meetings that's like the number one go-to for everyone yeah it's definitely something that you kind of have to get used to and and talk out with your team and your manager to see what can change if anything could be changed because you know sometimes people would just prefer the way that things are and that's something you can consider if you're looking for a new role or um, trying to switch into a new team. Um, not to sound too dark, but I think, you know, there's always options for you if you aren't in the ideal working environment that you want to be in. There's always other roles and other companies that are willing to look for you and hire you based on the skill set that you have, especially with cybersecurity, with so many companies who are looking for good cybersecurity talent. And I actually have a course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity. If you guys haven't checked it out, it is linked down in the description below on everything that I personally use to get my first job in cybersecurity with, without any cybersecurity experience. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it was interesting or at least insightful to you guys. For those of you who may be new to cybersecurity and haven't started your first job yet or, or have just gotten started and are confused as to why there's so many meetings on the calendar, um, I feel for you and I hope that things get better with some of these tips that you may be able to incorporate into your day to day. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And I'd like to thank you all for sticking along with me. And I'm wishing you the best of luck in your careers, your personal life, in school, in your bootcamp, everything going into 2023. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.